I've done things that you would never imagine in this business. The ultimate needle mover! Who the hell you think you are sitting in my ring right now? After only a year, I'm sitting at the head of this table about to take your title. Undisputed star power. Tell them whose game this is! In a monumental match. You're not going to want to miss this. Roman Reigns. Ooh. LA Knight. Yeah. Riyadh goes big time. Maybe LA Knight's game, but it's Roman Reigns' world. WWE Crown Jewel, live this Saturday afternoon. Special start time, 1 p.m. Eastern, 10 a.m. Pacific. Streaming exclusively on Peacock. Saturday afternoon, special start time, 1 p.m. Eastern, 10 a.m. Pacific, streaming exclusively on Peacock. What's up, guys? 
guys, welcome on into another edition of WWE's The Bump. I'm Megan Morant alongside Matt Camp. We got a massive week here in WWE as we inch our way closer to WWE Crown Jewel. Matt, like I said, big week with the premium live event right around the corner. Three days away from Crown Jewel. So many championships on the line and a lot of different paths can change this Saturday in Saudi Arabia, including with one of our guests today. Absolutely. We have a star-studded show coming at you today on WWE's The Bump. But first, got to get it out to our friend Ryan Popolo, who's going to tell you guys how you can interact and be part of today's show. That's right, Megan. To your point, an absolutely loaded week here in WWE. So much to look forward to in the coming days. And one of the greatest lineups we've ever had here today on WWE's The Bump. So if you want to be part of all of that, you'll know the deal. Hashtag WWE The Bump on all the platforms, you know, Facebook, X, Instagram, YouTube chat. I'm in there with you right now. We're talking about our favorite memories of everything we've seen this week and some of our guests. Get in on the conversation. You're the first host of this show. Megan, let's kick, kick it back to you. I'm so excited I can't even speak. <laughs> well, Ryan, you said it perfectly. One of the biggest shows that we've had in Bump history. We have some legends coming on the show today. Let's talk about who's going to be joining us. Our very own Kayla Brack and sat down with the man who has taken WWE by storm in 2023. He's got the biggest opportunity of his career at Crown Jewel as he takes on the head of the table, Roman Reigns. L.A. Knight will join us today. We also have an absolute legend in studio, and I don't need to say any more than that. Lex Luger is here. He's going to be with us very shortly. And, of course, one of our all-time favorite guests on the show. He's quickly rising up the ranks most of the time. I can't even believe we got him. He responded to a tweet. Johnny Gargano is here in studio with us today. Well, you guys, um, we're going to do something a little bit different with the premium live event right around the corner. It's uh, one of my favorite vices that I have. Uh, <laughs> gambling! We are going to talk all about our picks heading into Crown Jewel. This segment is sponsored by DraftKings this season. New customers can bet $5 in pocket $200 in bonus bets instantly. Plus, all customers can get a no sweat same game parlay every single day. Download the app and use the promo code WWE when you sign up. DraftKings Sportsbook. The crown is yours. Are you guys ready? Because we got a lot of matches to break down today. Um, let's go ahead and start with our predictions. The World Heavyweight Championship is on the line as Seth freaking Rollins takes on. Drew McIntyre. Ryan, we'll start with you. Who do you got? I mean, for me, I don't want to see what Drew McIntyre looks like if he cannot get this done against Seth freaking Rollins. He's put so much into this. I think he does crack the code. Give me Drew McIntyre. At this point, though, I am worried about Drew. I have Seth said it. A little bit whiny. A little bit talking about all those other things that he's worried about. Needs to worry about strictly the world heavyweight champion. That's why, and still, Seth freaking Rollins gets it done at Crown Jewel. We uh, have this situation where it's become personal, as it always does in WWE. Drew McIntyre, we've seen a different side of him, and I'm taking Drew McIntyre in this match at WWE Crown Jewel. Let's move on to our next match over at Crown Jewel. Of course, we have the Women's Championship match um, going on, and Bianca Belair made her return. This is so exciting. I know it's the era of EO, but whenever the EST she is in the ring. You can't count her out. Give me Bianca. The era of EO has been so impressive, not only for what she does in the ring, but how she keeps the championship. And impressive because damage control will always be there. Bianca's dealt with it before. She can't get over that hump this time. The era of EO continues. You both watch all of these premium live events with me. You hear me say countless times that I just think EO Sky is so damn good. Bianca Belair is the EST, but and still give me EO Sky a crown jewel. Wow, the numbers game could come into effect, and we know damage control runs the numbers game, but I still like Bianca here. All right, let's move on to our next match at WWE Crown Jewel. The United States Championship match. Logan Paul has his eyes set on the Hall of Famer Rey Mysterio. He wants championship gold in WWE. It's something he's not been able to do yet. Logan's been very impressive. And uh, I kind of like the alignment we saw between him and Dirty Dom. They were on the same page. Give me Logan Paul. 
Logan Paul doesn't have the experience that most do, but the experience that he does have has been strictly in the spotlight. Think about last year at Crown Jewel, what he did against Roman Reigns. He's been in the Royal Rumble, multiple WrestleMania matches. Coming off a victory at SummerSlam, he gets another victory when he is the new United States champion. Yeah, Matt, Logan Paul really isn't in the business of making predictions, setting goals, and not accomplishing them. Rey Mysterio is Rey Mysterio, but what Logan Paul has done in an incredibly short amount of time is nothing short of unbelievably impressive. We're going with Logan Paul, Megan. Wow, we are all taking the Maverick Logan Paul. The reaction, if that happens, will be a sight that we don't want to miss. All right, moving on to our next match. I am so excited about this one. The WWE Women's World Championship is on the line in this fatal five-way match. Nia Jax has taken the division by storm since she's made a return. But can anybody stop Rhea Ripley? I don't think so. Give me Rhea. Mommy's always on top for a reason. This will be her toughest challenge when you think about Nia and Shayna and Zoe and Raquel. Some former champs there, some hungry opponents, but still, Rhea always finds a way to get it done, and she will on Saturday. Uh, yeah, this is going to be absolutely chaotic in the best way possible for us, the WWE Universe. Uh, and all five bring such, such incredible factors to the table. But Rhea Ripley, uh, th that's the sentence. Rhea Ripley, and still. Again, all of us together with Rhea Ripley. Moving on to our next match, Cody Rhodes taking on Damian Priest. We're in this situation again where Cody Rhodes enters a premium live event less than 100%. That's all thanks to being attacked by Damian Priest with a steel chair. But Cody, he can overcome the odds. Give me Cody. Cody Rhodes always is thinking about what the story is going to be. Where is it going? How does he finish it? But it was a little bit of a side quest here for Cody because he became undisputed WWE Tag Team Champions with Jey Uso. And then they lose those championships to Damian Priest and Finn Balor. Priest took it a step too further going after Cody's ankle. Because of that mistake, I'm calling it by Priest. Cody gets it done at Crown Jewel. Oh, that's really interesting that you flipped that that way. Listen, Cody Rhodes battling through all of this over the years, what we've seen, it's, it's some of the most iconic tales uh, and things we've seen in WWE history. At a certain point, though, especially with how much momentum that Damian Priest has garnered, I just don't know if you can rely on that 100% of the time. Give me senior money in the bank. Ooh, a bold pick, Ryan. I like it. Well, in our next match, John Cena. He needs a win. But Solo Sokoa has the weight of the bloodline on his shoulders. Who will come out at WWE Crown Jewel? I'm going to go with the greatest of all time. There's different pressure on both of these superstars. John Cena has put the pressure on himself to snap a streak of unbelievably over 2,000 days since he's won a televised singles match. He's putting that pressure on himself, but the pressure that must be on the shoulders of Solo Sokoa, not only as the enforcer of the bloodline, but coming into what is the biggest match of his career, that has to be weighing on him heavily. He has had seen his number with the Samoan Spike, much like his family member Umaga did, but I will also take John Cena. He gets it done at Crown Jewel. Matt, to that exact point, it's not easy to be in the bloodline. I, I actually am not sure if there's always a ton of positives in it. There's so much pressure. Solo Sokoa has to be uh, taken aback by the setbacks he's had throughout the course of the year. Not many, but more than I think he expected. With that in mind, it is the biggest match of his career, and I'm picking him to win it. Ryan, speaking of biggest matches of their career, LA Knight, he has that awaiting him in Riyadh, Saudi Arabia, as he takes on the head of the table, the tribal chief, the undisputed WWE Universal Champion, Roman Reigns. And I pick this one with my heart. No one has captivated the WWE Universe quite like LA Knight. I want the reaction. I want the yes. I want LA Knight to be champion. Give me night. You can want that way, and then you can look and go, this is the greatest champion we've ever seen in WWE. I don't pick against Roman Reigns. I made that mistake at WrestleMania. I'm not doing it here. No, 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 no. Roman Reigns and still. Yeah, LA Knight legitimately may be more unfazed than anyone who has faced Roman Reigns during that title reign. Do I think that will matter at Crown Jewel in the end? Nah, nah. Roman Reigns. Ryan, I love the Nana, -na, and you guys are both probably right. But picking with my heart, we're sticking with the Yeah movement. All right, we're going to do something a little bit different. NBA season is back, and um, we're going to make our picks for tonight. 
I gotta go with my Celtics. They're taking on the Indianapolis Pacers. We love you, Tyrese Halliburton. We love that you support WWE, but you're not gonna be able to get it done tonight. You look at the Celtics, they have Jason Tatum and Jalen Brown. This is their team now. No more Marcus Smart. And you know, I was thinking about it this morning. Al Horford, he's the leader in that locker room doesn't really say much, kind of like Bobby Lashley. And then you have the Street Profits, and that's kind of like Jason Tatum and Jalen Brown getting the business done. When Bobby needs to interfere, he does, and we see that with Al Horford. Give me the Celtics tonight. That was beautiful, Megan. Here's what I like. I like when superstars from different places come together and form something even bigger. That's why I like the Milwaukee Bucks against the Toronto Raptors. Dame and Giannis, it's like Jey Uso and Cody. Never would have expected them together. They come together. I love what's going on there. Bucks could be NBA champs come June. Give me the Bucks tonight against the Raptors. Yeah, I'm taking the Cleveland Cavaliers over the New York Knicks. It's really not a great pick because the Cleveland Cavaliers have started very, very slowly. But Johnny Gargano's here, and well, we're we're, we're just uh, you know we like to believe, even though it's not always best for our health. So give me the Cleveland Cavaliers, Megan. <laughs> I love it, Ryan, and that's that's a great way to honor Johnny and welcome him on in to our studio. Thank you all for joining us with this uh, DraftKings. This DraftKings um, segment, a little bit different than what we normally do here, but we want to remind everybody that you can get a no sweat same game parlay this season. New customers can bet $5 and pocket $200 in bonus bets instantly. Plus, all customers can get that no sweat same game parlay every single day. Download the app, use the promo code WWE when you sign up. DraftKings Sportsbook, the crown is yours all right we, we want to get to uh before we get to all of our guests and all of the excitement that is coming on the bump today we do have some breaking news in wwe it was announced yesterday that 28 live events are coming your way tickets are available for those live events and you want to get your hands on those take a look at this i'm here to set it off right get you all hyped Those tickets are on sale. Get them right now exclusively for viewers of The Bump. Head to WWE.com slash events or scan the QR code on the screen right now. Find your event. Use the passcode The Bump to access tickets during an exclusive two-day pre-sale window. Pre-sale opportunities start right now and last until tomorrow night. So hurry up and don't miss out on the excitement live. Get those tickets. They're coming up. So much going on in WWE. We all want to hear from the man that the people call the megastar as he prepares for the biggest match of his life. And our very own Caleb Braxton had the opportunity to sit down and catch up with LA Knight right before Crown Jewel. LA Knight, welcome. Uh, thanks for sitting down and, and talking with us ahead of one of the biggest opportunities of your inter entire career. Just diving right in. Uh, how are you feeling? You know, well, let's just go ahead and call it what it is. It's not one of the biggest opportunities. The biggest. This has got to be the biggest. And the reason being, uh, it doesn't get any bigger than the WWE Championship, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, so here we are. We're walking into Crown Jewel. It's my first, first PLE in Saudi Arabia. Mm. Look at that. Right at the top of the card here we are, going for the top prize in the business, going for that WWE Championship. So uh, you talk about a big day, yeah. Well, no, even like sitting right here with you, and, and, and any time, of, as we've watched. It's a big day sitting right here uh, with uh, me, is that what you're just that, saying? That's what I said. That's right. But uh -huh. watch, watching your rise, you always have this, like, this vibe about you, so cool, cool calm, collected. Uh, but has that been a little bit harder for you to, to maintain that, knowing that you're going up against Roman Reigns? Uh, we're cool on the surface, and there is uh, any range of bubbling happening inside this head at any given moment, whether it's anger, frustration, hey, maybe even a little bit of happiness. I mean, we got to be a little bit happy with 
where things have gone at this point, right? But uh, there's a lot of frustration with just uh, the road that it's taken to get here and to do all this. Uh, you could maybe even say a little bit of resentment in a certain sense. But with all that anger, all that frustration, all that resentment, and even a little bit of that happiness, uh, I'm going to walk in and take every bit of that out on Roman Reigns. Well, you know, every superstar has their process when preparing for any match, especially one at this magnitude. So have and you... I'm going to guess you're going to ask me what mine is, aren't you? Or just how it's been different, uh, you uh, nothing, know. Nothing's different. Nothing changes. Nothing changes at this point. Look, if I'm dancing and they say, hey, he's a pretty good dancer. We're going to bring him in. We're going to do this over here. Okay, cool. Am I going to change my dancing? Hell no. What brought me to the dance? That's what I'm going to do. I'm going to keep on doing that because it worked for me. It's continuing to work for me. As a matter of fact, it's taken me to, to levels that I've never been. And I'm taking this whole place with me mm -hmm. to levels that it's never been. You know, you know, talking about you know bringing this place with you, uh, you might have to be a little concerned about who Roman could potentially be bringing with him mm -hmm. and the bloodline. Hopefully... You know, you could deal with Roman without the distraction and the addition of, of the bloodline getting involved. But sure. I imagine you've had to kind of, you know, think about that and how that could change things. Well, that's something you got to consider at any point when you're talking about the bloodline. But at that point, that's where you got to figure, okay, well, I got to figure out different ways that I can take care of those extra little X factors, right? Those little additives. You talk about a solo, you talk mm -hmm. about a Jimmy Uso. You even consider Paul Heyman. He could maybe pull off his little stinky shoe or something like that. You never know. Uh, but. With that in mind, I got to keep my eyes on the prize, stay focused on the man in the middle of the ring, and that's Roman Reigns. But as far as that's concerned, uh, I didn't need to bring anybody along with me. I didn't need to bring a, a whole crew of goofs with me, my cousins and my whole cross-eyed family with me. I'm going to walk in by myself, just like I always do, and walk out with that WWE Championship. Well, you mentioned Paul Heyman. I, I want to talk about your recent run-ins uh, with him. It, it, was, it was pretty entertaining for, for me to, to, to watch you two get into the ring together. You had, you know, had Paul say your, your catchphrase uh, a few times. How do you think he did with that, by the way? How are his uh, look, yes? Man, uh, here, here's Boss Hogg, always trying to get himself uh, to look good here on TV. But uh, even saying my name, even saying my things ain't going to make you look good on TV, Paul. But what are your opinion of Paul Heyman and what he has meant to the Look, bloodline and to Roman Reigns? Paul Heyman is a guy who has been around this business for a very long time. He's a very smart man, except when he does very stupid things. But here's the thing. I, I look at him and I just go, man, he's got the brain of a thoroughbred. Paul Heyman does. The problem is he's got the body of a guy who's just thoroughly been eating all the bread. <laughs> it's a very different thing. Uh, so I got to fist bump you for that one. I got to fist. Let's do it. We'll do it after. We'll do it after. <laughs> Sorry, what were you saying? This lady. What were you saying? I don't know. Okay, were you saying so, something? So that, that, that's, you know, huh? Paul Heyman, you know, and he has done a lot to help Roman Reigns yeah. in the bloodline over the years. But, you know, but LA look, Paul Heyman, look, if I just got to cut you off. Okay. Oh, there we go. Uh, look, Paul Heyman, he's going to do everything he can do. You know why? Because he saw from the beginning, he saw the acclivity of LA Knight. He saw me making that climb, making that walk toward his prize, toward his boy, toward the WWE Championship. And he saw that, hey man, we got a problem here. We got to do something about this. So I'm sure he's going to do every little thing he can to keep me away from that. But guess what, Polly? There's only so much you can do because sooner or later, the fact is there is one man who is going to run this industry in a very short amount of time. It's this guy. You know the name. You got something else to ask me? I have a few more things to ask right. you. And, you know, L.A. Knight, you, you are strictly, you're a student. I got a little bit of time. Let's you're, be quick. You're a student uh, of the game. We know yep. you put a lot of thought into every single thing that well, you I gotta do. I got to be a student so. of the game because it is my game. It ah. is your game. But listen, it's been yeah. Roman Reigns' game uh, for quite some time. What is your assessment of his dominance as champion over these last three plus years? Well, I'm going to tell you my assessment. My assessment is everybody's sick of that because here's a guy who, what, he's got a, I can do math here. Uh, <laughs> he's got about one title defense every three, four months. Uh, what, four defenses a year? And we're, we're celebrating the fact that he's been champion for 1,200 days? you got to be kidding me. 1,200 days, as impressive as that is, can come to a real quick halt when you find yourself on the business end of a BFT. And that's what I think that we're going to find, the crown jewel. But look, man, you talk about the tyranny of this. This revolution is going to walk in and release everybody from that tyranny with a new WWE champion. Well, you know,
with your run-ins with Roman, again, you think about everything that you do extensively. What has surprised you the most about your run-ins with Roman so far? You, I know you were watching him from a distance uh, before all of this kind of started, you know, playing out in front of us. But what has surprised you, if anything? Uh, nothing surprised me. I'll tell you why. Because, look, Roman knows what this is. This is something he's never seen before, something he's never contended with before. And he's been in the ring with everybody down the line. Name him. He's been there with him. And now he's dealing with a force that he's never seen, a revolution that maybe he's never seen. So, would I be surprised at the way that he's reacted or acted in the last couple of weeks? Hell no. You know why? Because he's going to do every single thing he can in his power to try and stop this. But you can't. I can't stop it. <laughs> you mentioned earlier how you know this is your game uh, and how you're this cool, calm, and collected guy, yeah. uh, no matter what it is that you face. But you know what? Roman has been too. You know, one of his greatest attributes has been able to get uh, under his opponent's skin, have this mental uh, edge over his opponent before the match even begins. But do you believe in some way that you've kind of been trying to beat him at his own game with that? My, my, how the tables can turn right there. You talk about masters of mind games just getting game this ain't my first time around the block here so as, as short as this has all happened in a very small amount of time you've seen la knight come from the very bottom all the way to the damn top and how have i done that i've done that by being the master of this game because it is my game but you talk about the mind games you talk about all that it's almost like i have a an immunity to that maybe even Perhaps some some way to turn it around back on them. I don't know how that mm -hmm. works, but somehow it just seems to work out that way. That doesn't it? Yeah, you know your confidence is very admirable. You know it, it, <laughs> it, it's it, it's 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 comforting. I'm sure for for some. Are you comforted right now? I'm so comforted. So comforted. So we know we're, we know, we know that you're not surprised uh, yeah. that you are in the position there's, that you're in. Comfort oozing out of you right now. <laughs> but when you won the battle royal at SummerSlam, yeah, did you ever think that you would be in this position just three months later, like that quickly? Look, I, I, I can feed you all the uh, uh, all the BS bravado and facade and say, oh, yeah, I expected this whole time. I, I don't know. I didn't expect it. Um, I expected to be given uh, what's coming to me um, for a long time now, and, and I feel like that's been long overdue. At the same time, I didn't expect to go straight from all that into this, but... I tell you, they say when it rains, it pours, but at this point, we're talking in a positive connotation where when things start to get rolling, that avalanche just starts to exponentially build and build, and now we're in a level where nobody could have seen it coming. Mm -hmm. I couldn't have seen it coming, but at this point, all you got to do is you got to realize that, hey, man, this rocket ain't stopping. So strap in and enjoy the damn ride. Hey, man, and hey, man. Hey, man. <laughs> I want to ask you point blank. Why are we saying hey man? Well, because it's like hey man, like Paul Heyman, hey man. So I want to ask you point Somebody blank. Somebody get her out of here. Night. Send her home. Point blank, <laughs> straight, straight up. Yeah. Do you respect Roman Reigns? I can respect everything that Roman Reigns has done from a professional perspective. He is, uh, again, you're talking about 1,200 days. You're talking about one of the most dominant guys running around in the business for the last who knows how many years. Uh, at the same time, personally, uh, I've watched the way that he conducts his business. Doesn't seem to be, be able to do a whole lot on his own. Personally, I don't really care for him all that much. Okay. All right. A few weeks ago, I actually sat down uh, with, with John CNN, and he had some really positive things to say about you, mm. mostly concerning or surrounding how the WWE Universe has been so behind you, how incredible it is to hear, Hydrate, everybody. <laughs> hear them erupt uh, when, your music, uh, when your music hits. And so considering that the WWE Universe is so squarely behind you, especially this match at uh, Crown Jewel, do you have a message for those who have been so fiercely in your corner? Um... No, not really. Uh, I, I don't have a message for those people. You know why? Because, look, I, I've never needed to go out and pander and ask for the people. I go out there, I say my name, the music comes on, they want to say it with me. Come on the ride with me. Come on down with me. Come with me. But at that point, everything that I'm doing, everything that I've done, everything that I've done to get here and walk here, I've done by my damn self. They're all welcome to come with me. I ain't going to turn them away. But at the end of the day, the only person I can rely on is this guy right here. All right. Well, you know, in, in, in this match versus Roman at Crown Jewel, again, biggest opportunity of your career, would you say that this is something that you envisioned for yourself, you know, when, when you were thinking about what your career would look like in WWE and well, sports yeah. entertainment? Yeah. Yeah? Yeah. Look, 
if you get into this business, if you end up in the WWE and your aim is not to be the top man, if your aim isn't to be the WWE champion, I don't know what you're doing here, uh, personally. Uh, for me, that's the only reason I got here. I didn't come here to be, you know, background player. I didn't come here to be supporting cast. I came here to be the guy. I came here to be top dog. I came here to be the guy that runs the game. And uh, so, when you consider that, yeah, look, look, a lot of people like to create little vision boards and all that kind of crap. The vision board's in my head, and I see myself wearing that WWE championship over and over and over again. So, whether it happens to be Crown Jewel or sometime down the road, you will see that, and you will call me champ. And I want to get to the, to the why real quickly before before uh, you know, we close down. The amount of people who have tried to dethrone Roman Reigns in the last three years, and everyone has wanted to step into that challenge. Mm -hmm. But now you have this opportunity at Crown Jewel, a massive stage. Why is it that you believe that it will be you, when it could be nobody else, it's going to be you who is able to do the impossible? Look, there's no way for me to rationalize it. There's no way for me to reasonably explain to you how, why, etc. And I'm not going to make it sound like it's easy. It ain't going to be easy. It's going to be an uphill climb. It's going to be an uphill battle. Again, you mentioned the fact that you got the, the bloodline is going to be there. You got Paul Heyman. All those factors that are in there. But even take those out of there, if it's just me and Roman one-on-one, -on -one, that's still a hell of a challenge. I ain't blind to that. But you got to look at the fact that, man, again, you just talked about you know, if you think back to the summer, did you think you'd be here? Hell no. A and if you look at how quickly everything has moved and how forcefully I have moved my agenda forward, I, I don't know how to stop this. I can't stop this gravy train. I can't stop the undeniable Kavorka. You're feeling it right now. And I cannot stop being L.A. Knight. And what that means is very soon, in the very short future, you will you will see me carrying gold. All right. Well, before we go, I uh, thought we'd, you know, lighten things up and play a little game. Uh, what are we doing? What do you think? Uh, it's going to, uh, we're coining this game. We like to come up with our own names. Uh, this is going to be called Nah or Yeah. Kind of rhymes, right? Okay, so here's how it's going to go. I'm going to ask you a set of questions. I'm going to ask you a set of questions. You were awful at poetry, weren't you? <laughs> or make a statement. Yeah. And you just need to answer, nah, or yeah. Okay, ready? Okay. LA Knight is the greatest WWE superstar of all time. This is a loaded question I right just, now. Just, are, you trying, start with something are you easy. trying to set me up right now? No, absolutely not. I would never do that to you. You're, you're, you're here trying to just feed me. Why would me. I do that? You know you, me. You want to come in and try and massage me yeah. and my ego, patronize. Oh, wait, are you saying I did it because you, you believe it? I, 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 I believe it. No, no don't, don't patronize I, me. Go ahead. What's your next <laughs> one? You're, you're enjoying this interview very much. Oh, is that a question or, or yeah, a statement? Yeah, nah or yeah. Oh, boy. Come on, uh, give it to me. Meh. That was an option, but we'll add meh in there. That's, that's option C. The bloodline is the greatest faction of all time. You know, look, the, some people could maybe say that, but uh, if you're asking me personally, nah, nah. <laughs> nah, nah. Roman Reigns title reign will end at Crown Jewel. Play the game. Come on, just, just, just humor me. <laughs> All right. Hold on. Hold on. Just stay right there. Don't go anywhere. Look, I go out in front of thousands of people each week. I say, yeah. I say, LA Knight. I say, let me talk to you. And everywhere I go, everybody's feverishly on top of every single word that I say. And now you want to make that into a game? It's a That's what we're doing with this is we're making that into a game? I think everyone will enjoy this. I'm enjoying it. I don't think anybody's enjoying it. You're the only one. <laughs> Is anybody enjoying this out there? Well, can you humor me? Uh, they all said, nah, nah. They're playing your game right now. I'm going to keep going. All right, go ahead. Okay. Roman Reigns. She's all flustered Roman over there. Reigns She's feeling that Kavorka. Roman, yeah. Roman Reigns title reign will it's end at first Crown time. Jewel. Huh? Roman Reigns title reign. Did I do that one? Roman Reigns title reign will I end at Crown Jewel. Words. Nah, nah, or yeah. I'm sorry, what did you say? I'm just going to answer for you. Meh. I'll tell okay, you what. Moving I, that's, on. A great, <laughs> that's a great idea, actually. <laughs> Tell you what, I'm gonna I'm gonna sit here and you answer as me. Okay, the WWE universe has the best fans in the entire world. Yeah. That wasn't a very good impression, but yeah, okay. Can, yeah. Can you, can you sound more like? LA Knight will be standing with the undisputed WWE Universal Championship at the end of Crown Jewel. Meh. That was an option you added into it. No. I have to stay, you know, neutral. That's what you believe. You know what, fine. This game was a bust, but I had a great time. One more question. This game was a bust we before you even started. We tried LA Knight. a terrible idea. What does LA Knight's reign up with this? as WWE Champion sorry, look what? like in your mind? 
Well, look, <laughs> you consider all the thoughts that everybody has as far as, oh, I want to be WWE champion, this, that, whatever. I need to finish the story. And, and all respect to, to Cody Rhodes or anybody else who wants to finish their story, but I ain't looking to finish anything. I'm looking to start something completely brand new. And so when I become champion, you're talking about, look, this revolution has already started to take hold. But beyond taking hold, now we need to take over, take control, and put a new authority, so to speak, a new reign in place. And so you're talking about a new day, a new era here. Uh, not new day, excuse me, guys, you nerds. Uh, but we're talking about uh, a new era here in WWE as this WWE champion, L.A. Knight. Yeah. Yeah. All right, there we go. Thank you so much, L.A. Knight. Good luck. Ah, thank you. I've done things that you would never imagine in this business. The ultimate needle mover! Who the hell you think you are sitting in my ring right now? After only a year, I'm sitting at the head of this table about to take your title. Undisputed star power. Tell them whose game this is! In a monumental match. You're not going to want to miss this. Roman Reigns. Ooh. LA Knight. Yeah. Leon goes big time. Maybe LA Knight's game, but it's Roman Reigns' world. WWE Crown Jewel, live this Saturday afternoon. Special start time, 1 p.m. Eastern, 10 a.m. Pacific. Streaming exclusively on Peacock. A big thank you to Kayla Braxton for sitting down with L.A. Knight. Obviously, that was filmed ahead of time, but today is L.A. Knight's birthday, so happy birthday to L.A. Knight, and best of luck this weekend at Crown Jewel. Well, we are back here in studio. We want to welcome on a very special guest for the first time in studio. He is the co-winner of the 1994 Royal Rumble and two-time WCW World Heavyweight Champion, the legend himself, Lex Luger. Yeah. Thank you. What an intro. Thank you, Maggie. Oh, Lex, thank you hey, so Matt. much thank for, you. Oh, hello. Uh, Welcome. for coming and, and checking out our studio here. It's truly an honor to have you. How are you doing today? I'm doing fabulous. This is awesome. Yeah. <laughs> well, whenever we have uh, legendary guests like yourself in Ooh. studio, we want to make sure that we um, give proper recognition to your very impressive resume. So let's take a look at all that you've accomplished. Oh, wow. Two-time WCW champion, five-time United States champion, two-time WCW television champion, WCW tag team champion, co-Royal Rumble winner, you're part of the Four Horsemen, NWO Wolfpack, and Dungeon of Doom. What's it like to see all of that compiled together? Wow, that's impressive. <laughs> yeah. Yes, it is. Thought that was long, still longest reigning U.S. champion. That's right. Mm. Most days as the United and States champion. Reign. and You got it all. You got all the records there. All right, we're going to have to get on our staff. To, no, that's okay. We need... You did a great job. Thank you. You left that part out. All right. Well, it's uh, very impressive and uh, <laughs> honored to have you here. Thank you. Great to be here. Uh, I want to talk. We're going to get into a lot of pivotal moments and memories from your career, but for those who may not know, how did you make the transition from the NFL and the USFL into this world of wrestling and sports entertainment? I walked into the sweat factory, Hiro Matsuda, who broke in. Hulk Hogan. Hulk Hogan and, and broke his leg. Yes. Paul Orndorff. He had this garment factory in Tampa. He turned the air conditioning off in the summer, and it was like 100, felt like 140 degrees in there. And he, uh, he uh, started training me in the off season, and I went back to football. I made my debut uh, a few months later, and uh, he watched over me, incredible guy, and Lex Luger was born. After that, and, and you have your training, you're in there with the best of the best, championship wrestling from Hollywood, the NWA, WCW, right away. I mean, you're, you're in there with Hall of Fame names and, and legends. How would you describe being in there with such high-profile superstars from the jump? You know, I really almost didn't know, didn't know how about such a 4th of July fireworks start to a career. That's not the normal path. Right. <laughs> you go from starting out, then you're with the Four Horsemen, and it was just incredible working with all the elite guys. I didn't even know, other than Rick, who would come down to Florida my first year, I didn't know if you'd show, show me Tully or Arn or JJ, I couldn't have told you who they were. Did, did you look I at... Everybody was telling me, you're going to be a Four Horseman? I'm like, 
Well, yeah, I, Rick's one of them, right? <laughs> That's how little I was a football player. I always tell people I was a wrestler who really was wasn't growing up as a wrestling fan. Right. And now in my now I've come full circle. I'm I'm like a fanboy of wrestling and all the guys now. So and I've learned how special wrestling is. How it's like family mm -hmm. and the fans that come up when you go to uh, meet and greets now and they bring their kids up to meet you. It's just it's an incredible uh, journey I've been on with wrestling for sure. But it was it was meter meteoric, right? Thank you. Yes. You got it. <laughs> Lex, I, let's, I knew let's... we had you here for a reason. <laughs> I'm the wordsmith. Yes. Uh, Lex, we're going to bring it to a social uh, perspective. So many people were so excited that you were going to be on the bump today. We're also going to take it to your proper official WWE debut at the 1993 Royal Rumble. Bobby Heenan gave you an amazing introduction. What are your memories of that uh, official introduction to Lex Luger in the WWE universe back in 93? Well, to be introduced your first time ever on WWE but at the Royal Rumble by Bobby the Great Heenan. I remember he was struggling because you were in the back with Vince and you, I go, what what do you, what am I supposed to call what am I supposed to say? It's just Bobby, you know, Vince, Bobby just to describe his muscles, you know, Vince likes to work out thing. So Bobby was almost like, but well, Bobby did a great job, like he always does. He nailed it. And yeah, it was a, it was just an incredible uh, memory for sure to have Bobby the Brain introduce you. Uh, absolutely, you made an instant impression, and then we're going to fast forward to a year later. We, would, Matt and I have been talking about the Lex Express all week, uh, and on the 4th of July, Lex, uh, you, you stepped out onto the USS Intrepid uh, and the Yokozuna Body Slam Challenge. Uh, this is one of the most iconic clips in WWE history. Uh, first of all, what was this day and moment like for you? What do you remember most about this? Uh, people ask me my fondest memories. Uh... That intrepid and the, with the way that was set up uh, in, the, in the harbor there with, on the USS, it was, it was a very special moment in my career. A little, little crazy on the helicopter ride in, there was a, by the way, they, they brought a, an actual pillow from the Lex Express bus on. It still got some of my, uh, if yeah, you look close, right uh, some, some yeah, of my protein so. shake stains on it. <laughs> These are definitely authentic, no doubt. Thank you. Well. And, uh, but it, it was an unbelievable tour. I was asked that earlier. Um, the tour itself, some people, well, you didn't win the title, and they dropped the balloons out of the ceiling and all that. But the tour, I remember at Denver, there was a Toys R Us. We're going back now. Yes. And there were, it was 100 degrees out in the summertime. And there, people were wrapped around the building for, like, double around the building. I mean, the crowds and the, just the, the – they did a A and e about the tour, and Bruce, who I love. Yes. He kind of described, like, I, I was a reluctant – Guy, but really, the, the, it, it was a, a great memory. I, I was on the, spent a lot of time on the bus. It was, it was a grind, but it was a good grind, and uh, it, it was, it was a, more definitely one of the highlights of my career. Sure. Love hearing that. Now, Lex, uh, we had, like I said, so much fan response. We have a couple fan questions that we're going to get to right now. I saw this one a lot. This one's from Andrew. Uh, I might have a guess as to this, but I want to hear the story why. Who was the hardest guy to get up for the torture rack ever? Oh, easy, roadblock. <laughs> That was my guess. He was, all, he was all greased <laughs> up, as they say, and he was 400-something pounds. In about three minutes, the match, he was blowed up, as we say. <laughs> and I, it took me three times to get him up. The people in the back were laying wagers. There was no way he's going to get him up. <laughs> there is no way. And when I got him up, uh, my response was obviously uh, incredible. Just like when I slammed Joko, because we just only done a walkthrough. I was so relieved I got him up that I went nuts. <laughs> But the crowd so, was with you for that. Oh, they, my gosh. it was the first, and you got him yeah. up after the second one. Yeah. Come on, let's go. The, and boys, they, uh, the guy that, uh, Kevin Sullivan was the booker in the back. He goes, he goes the, that was the biggest pop in the back I've ever seen from the boys when you got him up. No one thought I was going to be able to do it. That's, so that's that, that was Lex, definitely speaking, my toughest rack. Yeah. <laughs> speaking of incredible fan reactions, the NWO Wolfpack always got those. This question's from Verb Ganya, who says, as many will still tell you, the Wolfpack is back causing mass destruction. How does it feel to see the lasting impact of that group even still today? Oh, when I do uh, meet and greets with some of the guys, uh, with uh, Kevin Nash and Stinger, it just it, it, it there's an action figures out on it. I mean, it's... Just, uh, it was a special group. We almost wish we would have went longer. We could have got maybe a little more out of it, but wow, it, it was it was probably the biggest crowd response maybe I ever had coming out in the buildings. Kevin Nash has talked about the fact that when he does meet and greets, 
there are now kids that come up to wearing NWO stuff that were not born. And what is that like to see kids that are born 15, 20 years after the NWO was at its height? I guess that's a tribute to it, right? It's kind of transcended yeah. our generation and now the new generation. Because a lot of times I love doing the meet and greets because, like, the millennial dads will bring up their kids. This is who I watched. And look at <laughs> And they have their bag full of figures that they have. They want you to sign and everything. So part of what I talked about, wrestling being so special, family, the, 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 the family, the moms and dads pass it down along to the next generation. And the Wolfpack has endured, like kind of like the Horsemen. Absolutely. Was part of, I've been in some of the best factions. <laughs> I, lo I love faction wrestling right now. We get what we got going on in WWE with all the factions. Yeah. I love factional wrestling. I think it's, it's great for the fans. Well, Lex, let me tell you something. Um, we might have to have you on more often because news came out on social media that you were going to be on our show, and one of our current WWE superstars said, I have to be there, too. He's here right now. We have interview questions for him, but he's got some questions for you. So let's welcome on Johnny Gargano yeah, to the show. Yeah, welcome back. All right. What's up, buddy? Hey, Good hello. to see you. How are you? How are Thank you? you for coming in. I know it wasn't for me. Good to see you, sir. <laughs> Good to see you, sir. Good to have you, man. Yeah, Thanks for coming. Here. Thank you. Thank you. Wow. Thanks Johnny. for having me. Thank you for letting me well, crash your party here. Yeah, thank you so much yeah. for yeah. responding um, to Matt. Yes, thank you. Yeah. I appreciate course, that. You had a busy Monday night, I know. I did, A victorious right? yes. Monday night, by the way. Halloween was last night. That's true, yeah. I have a child now that wants to do <laughs> Halloween stuff, so. But you couldn't miss this. No, The opportunity to sit next to We have the Lex Express pillows here. Come on. I got to be here for that. This is. a real stage. What kind of Protein was on there. Chocolate. Chocolate, okay. Yeah. Oh, is that your stated. preferred protein? No, I'm actually more of a vanilla or a strawberry oh, guy. Oh, okay. But, there you go. Yeah. But well, the Ico Pro they had on the bus was chocolate. Oh, I, I, Ico Pro. And it tasted delicious. You got to right? want it, right? going back, yeah. You got to want it. Well, my Ico Pro shirt yesterday. I have one. <laughs> well, Johnny, we're so excited that you're here. We have a lot of questions of our own to ask you, but I wanted to give you the floor first. I know you're a big Lex Luger fan. Yeah. Oh, How wow. many questions I'm you want to ask? I'm a big Johnny fan. Yeah, oh, thank you so much, sir. Uh, well, I think me and Matt have a very important question. Matt, you want to? No, I'll let you ask let, it. Okay. I'll let you ask it because you set it up in the, on X. Okay. On <laughs> that first Nitro, mm -hmm. when you came back to WCW, Mall of America. You know where this is going. Uh -oh. You're going to the big white. <laughs> no, I, I, but, no, but there's a question I don't think has been asked of you. Yeah. Uh -oh. Okay. Did you purchase the white shirt in the Mall of America earlier that day, or was it in your collection? <laughs> no, already? they had me hidden away. I couldn't have gone shopping. Okay, fair okay. enough. That would have blown the surprise. That's true. I actually, that was a custom made shirt that an NBA superstar played 23 seasons in Atlanta. I'm an Atlanta guy now, born in Buffalo, but now Atlanta. He made me all my first custom-made suits, Kevin Willis. Kevin Willis played with Dominique Wilkins. And he was a, also a clothier, and he made me that shirt years before, and just, I always loved that shirt, and when I had the big moment for Monday Night Show, I, I, I came home from Newfoundland or something on the road with WWE, I wrestled yeah. tag match against think, Shawn Michaels and Scott Hall. I had to go home and grab something. I grabbed, I grabbed the big white shirt with the Nehru collar. The rest <laughs> is history. Does it, does it exist anywhere still, by any chance? I got a young guy I mentored who's Quite, quite the uh, elite athlete. Uh, I gave it to him. He wanted. Wow, it. wow. It's, That's a piece it's of still history. there. It That's history. That's fantastic. Yeah, wow. That's amazing. He still know. has it, right? As far as I know. He better. Oh, you yeah. better. That's history, right you there. You better. Come on. Better have it. All right. Know. I'm glad you told us the story. Are you, <laughs> <laughs> you better have it. Uh, let's move ahead to a big moment in your WWE career. 1994 Royal Rumble. You're in the only tie in WWE history with Bret Hart. A few years ago, we By actually. By the way, I have little ears, and my thing. I have the same problem. <laughs> okay, I'm I'm I got the We're same good. thing. Yeah, yeah, don't worry. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> we talked to Bret about how that Rumble ended up, and uh, this is what he had to say. Mm. Mm -hmm. He was always a uh, avid supporter of mine, a guy that you know never changed his personality. It was always kind of like the, the best man won kind of thing, and I always loved that about Lex that he was a, a good sport about that because there's a lot of wrestlers that would have had a chip on their shoulder about that kind of thing. I think Lex was was one of the great wrestlers of that era. Um, he was always um, a good athlete. <clears throat> he was always a um, a solid guy, like behind the scenes, just as a friend, as a man, he was always a good guy. Always spoke the truth. Always um, told you what what was on his mind. He was not a guy to troublemake or uh, take the shortcuts. Or you know, he was a guy that he'd give you a hundred percent in the ring. Uh, I always always had respect for him, and I think that um, you know all the challenges that he suffered after, like post career. You know, you see what kind of a fighter Lex is, and what kind of a what kind of heart he has, and uh, 
I, I admire him for being a guy that uh, has never changed. He's always been that man. He's always been that solid guy. What's it like to hear those comments from Brad? Wow, I've never seen that before. Wow. That's, that's, pretty, that's pretty cool. Thank you for playing that. Absolutely. Wow, yeah. I've never seen that before. Uh, yeah. I talked to Brett when he was saying those comments. You could tell how much you meant to him and what it was like to work with him, which you did before and after that as well at that Rumble. Brett was kind of a loner on the road. And Brett, I was one of the few guys Brett actually traveled with some. He got me hooked. There's, in the back here, I got a Starbucks coffee from LaGuardia when I flew in. And uh, Brett got me started. I was not a coffee drinker. Brett got me hooked on coffee. <laughs> Brett and I, and we started going over to Europe. We, 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 Brett and I would, would land. We'd I would go to go to the gym. We'd meet down the in the espresso shop down the lobbies at the European hotels. Brett, Brett and I shared this coffee thing, and uh, Brett got me hooked on coffee. What's your and, coffee uh, order? Now? Yeah. I'll get a, a quad shot of, of espresso. Wow. Oh. Oh, wow. <laughs> I'm not afraid. <laughs> I'll mix a little, sometimes I'll mix a little oat milk with it and a little sugar-free uh, vanilla. There you go. Yeah. There you go. Love You're it. You feeling Love crazy? It. Throw a little oat milk in there? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I want a little, little protein in there. Yeah. 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 <laughs> uh, winning that Royal Rumble, Lex, it was your first one. We just saw your debut was well, in your prior. I didn't win it. I was well, you, taught, you won it? You, you won did it. win it. Yeah, you are listed as a Royal Rumble you did winner. Win it. Yes, co-winner. Uh, you it's your first it. Rumble match. You only had yeah. one more after that. Right, what was right. it like? I know the circumstances were different and controversial, but what was it like winning the first Rumble that you were in with? Oh, Brett? it was really cool, but we were nervous because we did a walkthrough with Vince in the ring beforehand, and I, my work was always fundamentals. I didn't do a lot of the incredible stuff we see now or going... I'd never gone over, you're going to find it hard to believe, I'd yeah. never gone over a, a, a rope backwards before. Oh, it's, it's not fun. <laughs> <laughs> well, but it's weird. Yeah, 100%. It's not and, natural at all. And I had Brett going with me. Uh -huh. So he cross-bodied me. I backed yeah. up one right. over. First time I ever going over, over backwards over top rope. So I was kind of nervous. But Brett, man, he's obviously one of the best technical wrestlers yeah. of all time. And he just... He clung to me like a spider monkey, and he, I don't know how he landed us both at the same time. Brett, Brett, I mean, Vince jumped out of his chair in the back, they said, because they ran it back in slow mo, and we don't obviously don't have the camera prowess and, and the te technical skills now. And Vince said we ran in slow mo, and you couldn't tell who hit. And they no. ran it a bunch of uh -huh. times. And raise the hand, raise the hand. Times, yep. That wouldn't happen. Yep. Yeah, uh, it was incredible. You're out so of. It felt great. It, it's a, it's so cool. It's we still talk about that one. There's no tie since then. So you do have history in that way. You're out of WWE after SummerSlam 1995. You're not out of the spotlight for long. Days later, as we know, you're going to pop up as the aforementioned uh, surprise, if you will, someone who's kind of switching sides at the Mall of America for there that very is. first night show. There's the famous oh, shirt. There it is. Right. White shirt. Still Mr. being Man. used. What kind of impact did you envision when you're back in WCW making this appearance? I didn't realize, because WCW uh, back then was always chasing WWE. Sure. So we, we didn't know, none of us could have imagined the Monday Night Wars and what transpired after that. So I was excited because I, I was going to be back with my, my buddy Sting, and he was a big part of me making the move back. Right. I really, I'm stubborn. I can be stubborn, people tell me. <laughs> I still want to stay in WWE. Vince and I were on a handshake agreement for me to re-sign with WWE. I, I wanted to not let SummerSlam and not come through. I wanted to prove that I, I could make it big time in mm -hmm. WWE. And I'd plan on re-signing and Sting, and I had a casual conversation on the phone. He found that I was not under contract anymore. I'd given him my three month notice. He was, wait a second, you're not under contract with WWE? You're working for them? You're on their TV? He go, yeah, we, we're gonna work it out. He goes, he told Eric Bischoff, Eric Bischoff, and I met at Sting's house. And a couple weeks later, I. I walked out with the big white shirt. That's but I, I also family. I lived in Atlanta. Right. Yeah. And they were based out of out of yep. Atlanta. So there was Makes sense. a lot to what a decision, but yeah, it was it was it was something else. I never could have imagined it would turn out to be a praise to what happened to in the Monday Night Wars. <laughs> yeah. yeah. If Jonathan doesn't have that shirt, oh my goodness, make sure you have it. Hold if on I to it. Phone, Don't do I anything text him with it. <laughs> John, did you take the shirt? Well, Lex, um, we know the torture rack is synonymous with your career, but can you tell us how Dusty Rhodes helped you end up landing on this impressive finisher? He just liked the way it showed my body. Yeah, oh, good point. Uh, I have Obliques a, are popping. I, I, have yeah. a, I have a clavicle here, it sticks out from all that weight of all these big guys on this shoulder. 
to this day as a, as a fond memory of the torture. Oh, I'm right? sure. Uh, it wasn't the easiest finish. There, there it is. is. There's there the is. one. The there you go. Oh, my gosh. Attempt three. Up like it was nothing. Yeah. Look up at the crowd, though. Up like it was nothing. He was big and greasy. <laughs> <laughs> oh, look. The, the collarbone oh, yeah. looks okay there. Look, oh, little, my gosh. Popping out a little. Yeah, wow, I can't believe you guys pulled that up. Well, let's talk my, about... My, my toughest rack ever. It, took me three it looked times. like it was nothing, though. Oh, well, that was the third time. Yeah, but I mean... Camera, but it went up. Camera tricks, you know. Yeah. <laughs> Lex, maybe the most famous torture rack of all time was when you took on Hollywood Hogan, April 4th, 1997 edition of Nitro. Yeah. It's, to me, one of the most iconic, if not yeah. the most iconic, title change in Watch television the crowd in the back. history. Oh. The crowd, I love those. Losing the crowds. Mind. As we see here, Look at that. you get them up. Watch Pee Wee the ref. What? Yeah, it's the best him. reaction. The best yes! reaction. Yep. <laughs> we found out right before it went to the ring. Oh, Pee really? Night. They didn't want it to get out. And the crowd was a delayed at... pop because they thought there was going to be a DQ. Yeah. And, they, and they switched the belt. The, the, <laughs> the roof almost came off that place. And it happened to be, I was pointed out afterwards, this is where you didn't come through in Somerset. That's in right. Building. Palace of like Auburn Hills. Circle. Oh, wow. Like, wow. Full circle. Everything yeah. happens for a reason. Big gold belt. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. Lex, the WWE Universe, and all of your well, fans. I know it's going to be a trip down memory lane. <laughs> oh, no, we got all this stuff. Come on. We got time. Tell I mean, stop. Please. Please. I mean, stop. Come on. Stop no, 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 no. It. Keep it. <laughs> when I found out you were coming on, I was like, oh, I'm going to jump into this research. Very excited. But uh, the WWE Universe, all of your fans, have been with you through so much of your career and your mm -hmm. life. Uh, you seem to be very thankful. That, do you have a message to all your fans out there that are watching here on the bump today? Oh, I just, I, I told you guys earlier, I think it was off camera, that I, I, I was a football player who became a pro wrestler, and I, I was a wrestler, but I, I wasn't a huge wrestling fan. I didn't grow up watching it, but through the years now, and interacting with all the guys and the fans, I used to think wrestling fans are like, were so fanatical, I thought they were out of their minds. They are. They chased the <laughs> elevators. I'm like, yeah, but we are, that's I part of the beauty. That's who we are. Yeah, huh? I'm like a big wrestling fanboy now. I watch it all the time. You ask me if I look at current guys, I go, oh, yeah, I was watching the loaded card. For this week, I'm like, man, this is like almost a, like a, should I say it? Yes. WrestleMania card? Yes. <laughs> I was like, wow, this car is loaded. So I'm like a big fan now. So I've come like full circle. That's awesome. Uh, as, as with wrestling now, we go to signings, and I said earlier that the dads bring up their kids, and this is who we watched, and they bring their bag full of stuff they had in their wall. And I, I was given a, uh, I was actually at a church giving a, a testimony last weekend, and the Pastor's how he grew up, and he, he, his mom had bought him my pillow. And he goes, I used to sleep with that pillow every night. I got up there and go, I embarrassed the pastor. Turned around and go, wow, well, pastor, I didn't know you and I had, had, had cuddled so much. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I'm just giving an example of just the, the yeah, just the, the, how special it is and how special the wrestling fans are. Well, Truly. you're you're a fan now, so I I'm sure I'm you're a the, fan of, of this guy sitting am, to your no, right no, 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 over no, no, no. here. Yeah. Um, so then you said earlier in the show, I know you're a fan of faction wrestling. I am. I love Johnny it. Johnny over here got back together with I his did. old pal Tommaso Ciampa I did. Um, yes. to form yes. DIY. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yep. um, what do you make of, of these two guys being back together? I mean, this is a trip down memory lane. Oh, and look how young I look. Together on <laughs> Monday Night Raw, made their Raw <laughs> debut this past week. Uh, what do you make? of Johnny being back with Tommaso. Watch Chico. me kick him in the head here. No. Oh. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Only buddies can do that. That is true. Right. Good point. Yes. It's like you yeah. have your ups and downs with yeah. Sting. You battle yeah. them, you're a tag team. Yes. 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 Yeah. I love Johnny it. I'm excited before. for you guys, man. Thank you. Man. Thank awesome. you very much, sir. Thank yeah. you. Yeah. Both you guys can work your you know what's off, uh, and it's going to be a lot of fun. It's going to be fun be. to watch. Should be. Should be. Yeah. Um, and Johnny, you had a, a big win on Raw. Yes. Um, this is something that you and Tommaso Ciampa have dreamed about doing yeah. together. Mm -hmm. What was it like for you guys to pick what, up wait, that victory? It means you guys are done with me now. No, no, you're, you're, no, no, no I'm kidding. Any questions for I'm Johnny, joking. throw them in there. We can circumnavigate it. I'm, <laughs> I'm joking. <laughs> and the narcissist comes out once oh, there you go. <laughs> there you go. I me. love it. I should, we should have gotten your mirrors. I apologize. Me. The humblest. The humblest. The humblest Lex Luger. Okay. Let's talk about Johnny. <laughs> but Johnny, what was it like to pick up that victory um, with Tommaso Ciampa on Raw? Yeah, we talked about it. You know, uh, me and Tommaso have been talking about what would it be like if DIY was on Raw or SmackDown. You know, we have a very long storied NXT career. Uh, our story speaks for itself. But when me and Tommaso first started here, 
back in 2015. We had our tryout. Uh, we were told no at our tryout. We did the Dusty Rhodes Tag Team Classic. We did all our stuff in NXT. When we moved together and we lived together in Orlando, yes. literally me and Candace got married and then we moved into an apartment in Orlando, Florida with Tommaso Ciampa. <laughs> we all three lived together and we didn't even want to buy furniture. True story. We didn't even want to buy furniture because we didn't know how long we'd be there for. Uh, here we are. We have a home now in Orlando. We both have kids now in Orlando. Both have and families. we have families so awesome. and uh, the fact that we're now two dads uh, <laughs> uh, being able to live our DIY dreams on Monday Night Raw. We had that win against Imperium, which is a big win. Great start. Uh, but I think it's only the beginning for our story. Really cool to see. Yeah. You guys have come full circle. Full so circle, wow. yeah. Yeah. Wow, yeah. You've just been in your about shoes it. before. Yeah. You've yeah. had this type wow. of thing happen. Yeah. That's very cool. Uh, first time tagging together though, since 2020, the Worlds Collide. Yeah, uh, yeah. Premium live event. Mm -hmm. Do you have to rediscover chemistry? Is that a thing with you guys? Uh, I think it, it's tough because like, I feel like me and Tommaso were put together for a reason. Like I said, we were told no at our tryout. At our tryout, literally, we were thrown together. We were thrown together in a car, thrown together in a hotel room. Yeah, we knew each other from the indies, but, but we never teamed together. Right, yeah. Never teamed together. And we were thrown together in the Dusty Rhodes Tag Team Classic. So we had to find our own chemistry there. But from that chemistry joined a very real friendship, a very real brotherhood that has obviously had its ups and downs throughout the years, to say the least. Yeah. Uh, but here we are back together again. And I think uh, every single time you see us team on Monday Night Raw, uh, we're going to get a little bit better. Right on. Now, Johnny, uh, we were all super excited uh, to see DIY back on Monday night, as was the WWE Universe, just as they were excited to see you here today. We're going to hit a bunch of fan questions. Let's you know do the it. Deal. Uh, let's start with this one from Amariah, who says, if DIY could face any team from any period ever, who would it be, in your opinion? Oh, boy. Uh, I mean, I think the, the go-to answer would be, that I've said many times in the past, would be DIY versus D-Generation X. Uh, Johnny Gargano and Tommaso Ciampa against Shawn Michaels and Triple H uh, would be my go-to answer there. Love that answer. And then speaking of love, here's a qu uh, really nice question from Stephen Craig Clemens Jr., who says, Johnny, what do you like most about your friend and DIY tag team partner, Tommaso Ciampa? What do I like most about him? I think it's yeah. his beard. Uh, <laughs> uh, no, I think it's, it's just, you know, he's always had my back. Uh, I mean, in more ways than one, sometimes he has my back with a crutch. Uh, sometimes he has my back in other ways, uh, but uh, we, we've been through so much together in this company uh, and to now be able to be on Monday Night Raw together and discover this whole new uh, time period of DIY. Uh, I just I can't wait to see what the future holds with us together. Again. You're coming back around with DIY. Mm -hmm. Lex, you've had those opportunities as well where you're I'll, I'll go to you and Sting where. You battled Sting. I love the story with you and Dungeon of Doom where you were kind of with right. Dungeon of Doom, but you were buddies with Sting. And what was it like being kind of in that role where you're a good guy and a bad guy at the same time? You know, you know listen to Johnny right now, their history. I, I didn't know how extensive it oh, was, yeah. both in the ring and out of the ring. And I think wrestling fans, all of you out there, really make superstars, and they really decide. Mm -hmm. And uh, you can have all these writers and storylines, but... Fans kind of pick who becomes, who rises to the top uh, sooner or later. And when it's organic, like it was with Sting and I, with, like it is with, yep. with you guys, yep. I think that the authenticity comes out 100%. on camera that you have off camera and it makes it special. And the fans, I think the fans are very astute. I believe they pick up on that. Yep. So, man, I, sky's Thanks. the limit, man. You, you can't fake a real brotherhood. No. You can't yeah. fake it. And the fans pick up on that. They do. They do. Absolutely. Yeah, they definitely. It's it's so cool to see you guys were strangers at your tryout, and yeah. then to living together, yeah, to yeah. you know being up against each other in the ring. Now you have families, and you're back together on Raw. Obviously, Imperia's been a little bit of a thorn in your side, but you were able to put put them to bed. Um, do you have any any words for Imperium? Any? I think you're trying to set me up. Oh, yeah. Or the tag division <laughs> as a whole. Tag division That's is loaded right now. That's trying to set me up. Trying to set me up. Uh, the, 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 the tag division's loaded. I mean, you got they Cody are. and Jay, and yeah. then DIYs back together. Yeah. You always got to look out for the new day. That Raw tag division could be fire. I mean, look at that. You got, like you said, you mentioned Cody and Jay. Judgment Day obviously are in our sights. Uh, the New Day, the most decorated tag team in WWE history. Uh, the Creed Brothers were on Monday Night Raw. Oh, 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 what a uh, debut. Yes. What a debut by those boys. I've talked I think I've sat here in this seat and talked about how much I love the Creed Brothers. KO, me and you and yep, KO, we did. Uh, so I think the potential for that tag division on Monday Night Raw is incredible. 
I, I think that you are going to see some bangers coming. I'm not to steal Sheamus's bit, but banger after banger after banger. Uh, that Raw Tag Division could be incredible. Well, speaking of, unfortunately, Johnny, next week on the show, yeah, we have a very doing. special in-studio yeah, guest, you were doing. the ring general <laughs> and Ludwig Kaiser, Giovanni Vinci, Imperium, will be joining us in studio. Johnny, I'm sorry about it, but we had to have you on this week. I appreciate uh, you that. Know, we, yeah. we keep you guys I'd rather be here with Lex, then, obviously. Exactly. The first Come on. first. Yeah, the first. Yeah, the first, first. first is... <laughs> Is always the best. Johnny, do you have any final words for, for Lex Luger? Lex, do you have any final words for the WWE Universe? Please, the floor is yours. Well, I just, on, wanna, I just want to, I just want to Johnny personally, man, just, you're just a, a you got get the whole world in front of you, man. Thank you so much. And awesome. love what you're doing and uh, keep on doing it, man. And, I, and obviously from my generation, uh, we wouldn't be where we're at today without guys like you. Thank so you. thank you for paving the way for guys like us. Awesome. You guys, this was absolutely beautiful. Thank you so much for joining us for another edition of WWE's The Bump. We'll see you guys next week.